Hello everyone, I hope you are having a wonderful time. Today I'm going to share my experience of using newly released Topping D70 Pro Sabre Digital to Analog Converter with a volume control, gain control knob as well as featuring latest UI from user interface from Topping which is a Aurora user interface that features a three button touch screen. D70 Pro Sabre retail for just under $700. Overall build quality and features and functions and everything Topping is really stepping up the game. New user interface that easy to use, fit and finish and functionality. I don't have anything to complain. It has proper the footers that are unlike they used to have a little rubber bunks underneath. So this one is big step up on that. This deck also features the 12 volt trigger all the digital inputs that you may ever need, but primarily I use as a USB DAC as well as using optical and coaxial. So those are three main inputs, digital inputs that I used. Topping D70 feature a few different additional options such as uh, two different uh, outputs, voltage outputs for RCA and XLR balance out. In this setup, I'm using this Dano PMA 2004R integrated amplifier pairing with this DAC and using AudioQuest Diamondback RCA cable with Belden 9490 speaker wires which is double runs. I put them together using AudioQuest banana plugs. For the sound sample, you will not hear with the subwoofer. I will be only playing with this DAC to M2 these two speakers, right? So this 2DDX speaker crossover is totally reworked. So it sounds different than the CSS design a little bit. So mid-range have a better enhancement, more natural and a little bit better separations. USB cable from Vibok Audio and connected to my 13-inch MacBook Pro with playing Audio Vana as well as streaming music from Amazon Music Unlimited, Apple Hi-Res Music. So everything works wonderfully well. So those two music streaming services are my main music streaming services as of right now. So I no longer use other products such as Tidal or Cobus or those uh, streaming services for because I, I got them for free. So that's why I'm using those two services. And sound quality is very good. I'm thoroughly impressed with features and functions and everything that it came with. So let's go through the menu here real quick three dot here so you can get into the setup menu you can go in there and you can choose a lot of uh, different settings advanced settings so you can push this main main button and channel balance sound mode output level so that's where I was talking about output level you can change it to 4 volt and 5 volt the mode you can change it to pre mode which is pre DAC as well as Next, if you hit it again, deck mode, you can change it. I totally disable the Bluetooth. Remote control is come with the fully functional remote control. So this main button, I use it as an input selector, but you can change it to a few different options. So those are all the settings that you can change it here. Filters function as well, new button, and I like to use it as an input selector for this main button. So those are all the features that you can change it in. Advanced setting, channel balance setting that you can change. And then hit this button, it will take you back to main menu. PCM filter, that is a factory standard. On off triggers, I really like this feature. As soon as you turn on your TV or your computer or anything that connected, it will turn on this deck. So that is a really good features that I like with the topping uh, products and main menu, right? That is, and this one is you can change it to input selector as well. So those are a few different input selector that you can choose from. If you hit this home button, 
touch screen, you can change it to view meter, you can change it to spectrum analyzer, you can change it to resolution that you are playing. Next one I like about this deck is if you hit this again and go to display and you can change home to normal right and you can change the view you can do all those again here and then the brightness you can change the brightness to medium to lower level brightness or higher or auto brightness that's what you can choose view meter you can change it to plus 4 db and plus 10 db but i keep it at the plus 4 db because i don't use it at all and then level meter all on, you can change it to normal page, FFT page, and all off. The level meter is the two lines that display underneath it. So I leave it all on and you can go back. So those are all the nice features that it come with. And next thing is output, I selected to all and PCM filter one through seven, you can play around. So that is uh, all the features that I really like. This top end D70 Pro Silver really step up the game. So as you see, everything is totally enhanced as well as giving you more easier, friendlier user interface. For the sound quality wise, I tried this deck using a few different system. This system, the TV system, my main system. So I tried Pioneer Tech S1 EX Towers, JBL L100 Classic 75th speakers and Musician Night One as well as this speaker, right? It does have white and deep sound signature, very nice neutral balance sound with very nice timbre and texture and very good bass control. But there are some things that I like to point out. What I find is the, uh, this deck totally can deliver very good quality transparency, yet there are a little bit of enhancement in upper mid-range area. So the reason I'm saying is, for example, one of my reference tracks, right? I was listening with my JBL L100 Classic 75th using Arcuface E4000 amplifier. I was listening to that Ain't No Sunshine by Eva Cassidy. So when I was paying a lot of attention for that track, there are a lot of hissing tape noise in intro and a few seconds into it. So that kind of uh, uh, original included micro detail, small nuances and small tiny noises are clearly reproduced, very revealing sound reproduction. Yet there are a little bit of a richness in upper mid-range area. But when I'm listening to her voice, it can get a little bit too brittle and bright for my taste. So even when I was listening to such as uh, Patricia Barber, the beats goes on. So that kind of track even shows a little bit or tiny bit of brightness in her voice and edges are a bit sharper and more uh, brighter than I would like. Other than that, like bass lines, mid-range, everything is well defined and very articulate bass quality and mid bass punchiness is totally shows that uh, the ESS DAC sound signature that is uh, pretty much it but only thing that lacking is ESS chip based DACs doesn't have AKM chip based DACs like deep deep rich bass signature so that's the uh, difference between these kind of DAC and chips design. So overall, performance wise, I have no complaint. Very good neutral sound in overall frequency range. High frequency uh, is very well extended as well as giving you nice spacious balance sound signature without getting too bright in higher high frequency area, but it needs a bit of air and a little bit more spaciousness and extension in overall that small high frequency notes that I would love to hear. This deck will give you very good signal to noise ratio. Background noise is very quiet, non-existent, but it does not offer 
deep, deep, dark background like I would love to hear. The price and performance, that's what we will be getting for $700, right? If you go up on $2,000 range of uh, decks, then you will have that kind of deep, dark background with really wide and deep sound stage. Overall sound stage is pretty wide and very spacious sound, very articulate notes that you will totally enjoy listening to. Conversation and dialogues and everything when I was watching movies or dramas, everything is crisp and clearly reproduced. I also tried with R2 uh, pre-amplifier with ice power, 500 watts class D mono blocks and R2 uh, pre-stage makes it a little bit more forgiving in terms of brightness in upper mid-range area because that is the ESS sound signature. They can sound great with any kind of transparent sounding setup but please keep in mind a little bit of the tiny bit of brightness that you may experience because if you are sensitive to it like me but personally I will recommend you to pair with these kind of uh, soft dome tweeters so it depending on how revealing your setup and how transparent your speaker is in the price point that you are getting that's as good as it can get and performance wise I have no complaint at all. Usability, everything is what you can get is very good, perfectly priced and perfectly featured deck that you can have for $700. I can easily recommend it to you if you are looking for topping and ESS chip based deck. Thank you very much for watching and happy listening. I've been